How do you think Saturday's game and the close call will help you guys if you do? Um, I thought the the way the events happened in that game um, on Saturday uh, was really a good testament to um, the hard work that our boys been putting in to prepare for moments like that. It's really hard to to um, to really copy that. I mean, you, you got a bunch of young players out there in a very hostile environment, uh, awesome environment to, to add that. But um, I thought our players responded uh, at the time that they had to. Uh, they experienced some some lows uh, during the course of that game, and they were able to overcome that. I mean, that is a true uh, testament of growth uh, that our players are experiencing right now. So to be able to go through uh, something like that, you know, come out bat battle tested, and still really come out with a victory out of that environment, uh, I think we're going in the right direction. What was it like getting woken up at uh, 4 a.m.? Were you part of that crew that got <laughs> air horned up in the middle of the night? <laughs> no, I, I, no, I slept through that. I don't know anything. I, that's just my first time hearing about that, actually. Um, no, but our, I think our guys, um, you know, just having to have the patience during the course of the day. Uh, you got a night game in State College, and, you know, we're sitting there, we're looking at each other for hours upon hours, anticipating a, a big-time ball game. I thought our players uh, really handled that well, you know, um, in spite of that. And uh, when it was time to kick that ball off, they were definitely ready to play. Curtis Samuel, how is he coming along? It seems like obviously Ezekiel's the bell cow, but um, how close is, is Curtis to getting more playing time? Curtis is ready to play. You know, it was just those situations where it was a it was a uh, hard fought game where I thought the, the guy that had to be in there was in there, and that was Zeke. You know, he's got my trust in all phases of the game. I trust him to run the ball, protect the ball. I, I trust him to protect the quarterback. You know, um, I trust him to make plays when the ball's not in his hands, and and he's probably the most complete back in my room right now that can provide that type of uh, comfort during the course of a hostile game like that. But uh, uh, Curtis Samuel is definitely a young man that we have to get in the fold more. And he is a very explosive player, averaging double digit every time he touches the ball. You know, so um, you know, was that the time and place? I don't know. You know, you you live. Uh, um, with that, but I definitely know that he can provide some 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 uh, explosive value to this team, and we have to get him involved. Talk about specifically the on the that talk part about. of the protecting the quarterback that you were yeah. talking about with Zeke. How how's he come along in that part of it? How good is he at that part? Well, I tell you what, um, you know, he he's he's really good. You know, he's a very physical football player, and if he can target a a, a defender, he is going that defender is going to fill it. I mean, he's very explosive on contact. Um, you know, he missed some on Saturday. You know, there was times where he didn't do so well. So we just got to try to iron out the inconsistencies as far as, you know, his execution. But um, as far as his ability to be able to do it, it's a very elite, he very had, elite. He had one where he absolutely stoned the guy. Yeah, and then yeah. the guy got back up and he put him back down. Do you guys show that to the, to the rest of the room to say this is how it's done? Absolutely. That is the culture that we, we try to support. You know, we are a, a four to six second football team and of relentless effort. And uh, I think when contact was made, he had about two more seconds left on that clock and, and he found a way to finish it. So that's the way he's trained and that's what we expect. But um, again, remarkable play by him, no doubt about it. Urban called him. In the situation where in overtime they score first and you're sending an offense onto the field and if you don't score seven points, the game's going to be over. You know, I mean, every time you touch the ball, you want to score. Absolutely. But that's a little different than if we don't get in the end zone, the game's going to be over. Absolutely. With the young guys you have, that environment, just how did you feel sending them out there? Mm. And then how did they respond? Oh, man, I don't want to, I don't think I want to expose how I really felt at that moment. <laughs> um, but you, you, you hope that when you put a team on the football field that you haven't prepared. All right, you have them prepare for moments like that. You cannot assimilate that in practice. You cannot, but you, you can create those scenarios for them to where they have to mentally focus in uh, on that, and hopefully it carries over into a game setting. I, I do know this, you know, in spite of all that, you know, um, there's nothing like looking in a player's eyes, all right, to find comfort as a football coach. And I just so happened to see uh, JT Barrett's eyes at that moment. And um, I'll tell you what, I got all the confidence that I needed that he was going to at least at that moment give everything that he had 
to try to put us in a situation to win that ball game. And it turned out that that was the case. You know, so when you see that coming from some young football players that we have right now, uh, you can't hope but to get uh, really excited and anxious to see what the future holds for this football team. Stan, is it, when you send guys out there like that, is it, as a coach, everything is riding on that next sequence of plays. Is, is there a hole in your stomach? What is the actual physical feeling as the kind of the season's on the line, so to speak? Because, you know, you, you've done what you can do. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, you know, uh, is there words in the dictionary to really describe that hole? I uh, know it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling. I, for me personally, you know, um, it's a feeling that I wish people can experience, mm -hmm. you know, uh, outside of the sport. It's, it's a very unique feeling knowing that you're actually going through something that has a major impact on a common goal amongst young men. And you're sharing that moment with the young men that you go to work with every single day, mm -hmm. you know, and, and um, it's, it's indescribable. Uh, what that feeling is, but to see our young men uh, respond, um, execute, and, and find a way to win the ball game, um, again, is, uh, is, is incredible, and it's, those are the memories that you never forget as a football coach, and you know. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch you off. No, it's okay. And, uh, you know, it's just, again, exciting for what the future holds with these young men. How do you know when a team's learned lessons from a close call as opposed to just them saying, hey, yeah, we had a close game, but we didn't really gain anything from it. How do you know that? You know, you don't, you don't know. You have, to really, you have to really press pause with our boys and, and help them reflect on those moments. You know, our, our, you know they're still young, you know, young, young men, and um, they can take some moments for granted. So it's up to us as coaches to, to press pause, reflect, and, and really point out some key points um, that can be detrimental to their growth in the future. So um, Coach Meyer does a phenomenal job of that, you know, in a team room setting. And, you know, as unit leaders, we're responsible for bringing those things up. And you can illustrate it through the film. And, and, um, and, and they, they tend to get it, you know. And when they get it is when it turns into execution. And, and it's, you know, a positive effect from there on out.